family, friends, and Black Friday. This was a time where you probably ate too much, or where you probably sat around too long, and then where you probably got up early and went shopping. I don't know what you have done. This might have been a good week for y'all, where you got to meet again with family and friends, with the reunions, you got to settle down after the traffic and the hustle and bustle and just catch up. Or this was a week where you just reflected on the ways God has been there for you, the ways that God has blessed you, the ways that God has blessed you to get another year. And you reflected on those who are still affected by not just the hurricane, but by life, by sickness, by car accidents, by jobs, by job losses, by, by all sorts of situations and problems that you reflect how fragile life can be, how fragile the things you love are, and how God and God's grace may have kept you and kept your family. It's been a good week. If you made it a good week, if you made it a week where you reflected on how good God has been, this can be a great week like every week. A week of family, food, and friends, and fun, hopefully. This is also Black Friday. Now, I am not going to talk bad about Black Friday. I, I don't see it as the evil thing that some people may see it as. I find it to be funny and pretty amazing that people will get up in the dark cold so early. And, and, and create a community. They, there's a community of people who line up. There they are, waiting, waiting, in the cold, in the darkness, for a store to open so they could rush inside and get some stuff on sale, great sales, to then go back to waiting, waiting online, so that they can then go back home and either go back to work or go be with their family. Black Friday is interesting to me where people really get up early to go get sales. It's a beautiful thing, and I really don't see it as the evil that it is, although it is kind of weird. I don't even see it as that selfish or material, in the sense that you may not be buying stuff just for you. You may be using Black Friday to buy gifts for people. You may be even using Black Friday to buy gifts for people who are in need of stuff. You may be using that Black Friday to be a good service to people. I don't know what you've done. I don't know your motivations. I mean, maybe all you do is use Black Friday to buy stuff for you. Who knows? But it could be a time where you see people gather together to buy stuff on sale. But the thing about Black Friday that goes against the spirit of what would be Advent, which is coming up soon, the spirit of Christmas holiday, is that what Black Friday represents is instant gratification and sale. Black Friday represents when you can get stuff for sale. And that whatever you desire, you can get it immediately. And by immediately, I mean however long you wait online. Right? But you can get it when you get there. Instant gratification and getting stuff for sale. That is what Black Friday represents. But our Christmas season and our season of Advent is where we have to hear the other message, where we realize that for God and the things of God, you cannot get any of that stuff for sale. And you cannot get it instantly. God makes no shortcuts. And in God's spiritual store, where you have to get virtue, righteousness, faith, wisdom, courage, and hope, you cannot buy Courage, hope, wisdom for sale. You have to earn it, pay for it through diligence and prayer and time and waiting on the Lord. You cannot buy, I cannot get your trust for sale. I cannot get your respect for sale. I got to earn it through every penny of whatever being I have and earn that trust and respect. And if I got your trust and respect for sale, I have just swindled you and conned you. You cannot get faith for sale. You don't just trip over faith and it just comes to you. You don't turn down the right aisle and see that someone accidentally put faith on the clearance rack and now you can get it for 75% off when really you were supposed to pay the full amount and you haggled with the Macy's person and you said, but I found it on the clearance rack and they have to honor it because they found it on the... You don't have that with faith. You have to earn it full on. Hope, you have to earn it full on. 
love, you can never get love for sale. And if you do, you swindle The things of God take time. And the things of God cannot come instantly, and they cannot instantly fulfill you or gratify you. It takes time. And you cannot get this stuff for sale. You can buy a shirt for sale, but what you cannot get for sale is a sense of peace. You can buy shoes for sale, but what you cannot get for sale is guidance as to where to go. You can buy a car for sale, but what you cannot get, I, I don't know what that car sounds like, right? You can buy a TV for sale, but what you cannot get are the right thoughts that actually entertain your mind and nourish you. You can buy a smartphone for sale, but you cannot get for sale wise communication and wise wisdom. These things come through time, and they come through the Lord working on you over and over, and through your ability to be open to the slow process where God creates in you growth, wisdom, love, and righteousness. And that's what this season is about. Before we get to the season, because it officially starts next week, I want to focus on one particular passage in our Bible. It is Peter, denial of Jesus. We did not, did not read the last verse, but I will, I will get to it. Jesus is telling the disciples, I'm going to leave you, and where I'm going, you cannot follow me now. I'm preparing a place for you, you can't come with me now. And Peter is so upset that he cannot follow Jesus now, that he says, to Jesus, why, Lord, where are you going? Almost like a child to his mother, right? A child to him, where, where are you going, right? Where are you going? Jesus replied, where I'm going, you cannot follow now. No instant gratification, no instant fulfillment. You cannot follow now, but you will follow later. He delays fulfillment. And Peter asks, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Why can't I follow you now? Why can't I have it now? I'll lay down my life for you. And you want to know what Jesus' response was to this, which we didn't read. And his response was, I tell you the truth, you will deny me before the rooster crows. So essentially Jesus showed Peter that you may think you want to follow me now, but you don't even know who you are. Now, Peter sounds like the guy who will say anything to make sure his girlfriend doesn't break up with him. <laughs> Where are you going? You cannot, uh, why can't I follow you now? I, I'll lay down my life for you. That sounds desperate. Now, I, I, I saw this poor guy in Barnes & Noble. I don't know what this man did. He obviously made a mistake with his, his, his girlfriend. He's on the phone. And the things that were coming out of his mouth, he was quoting Shakespeare. He was quoting Jay-Z. He was, he was quoting every possible thing he can quote to try to get this girl to realize he, he won't. He, 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 he'll turn it around. But it was desperate. And that's how Peter sounded. It sounded like he didn't really know who he was, and he didn't want to bear the feeling of rejection. He didn't want to bear the feeling of disappointment. He wanted to have what Jesus was saying now. But what Peter didn't realize was he did not know who he was. He did not know what he was made of yet. He thought that he would be able to make this grand gesture of love. But in reality, he didn't have it in him yet. And Jesus needed to tell him, you need this delay. You need this disappointment. You need to know that you cannot follow me now. You cannot have what you desire now. You cannot have fulfillment now because you aren't ready yet. And I'll tell you how you're not ready yet. You're going to do the worst thing you can possibly think of. You're going to do that. And with God, at times, what we have to realize is we, may, we are in a society where it's now, now, now. But with God and the things of God, the things we may be most needing and most desiring, that we feel that we deserve right now, God may be delaying the fulfillment, not because...